What's up folks, Ned here with Dino Works, and today I'm back on the dyno not just with our new 25Z900, but I'll also be showing you our new 25 Ninja 1100 here in just a second, because today we're not going to talk about something that is bike specific, so to speak. This is more of an exhaust design specific topic that we're going to cover here today. So as you can see here, our 25Z900 has a full Delcovic exhaust system installed, and these are a 4 into 1 header design. You can see all four head pipes here go straight into a collector simultaneously, back out to the mid pipe, and then to the muffler. In contrast to that design, many other exhaust manufacturers choose to use a four into two into one header design. And just so you can better visualize what that looks like, here is the full M4 exhaust system that we had on this bike initially. You can see there that all four head pipes go down into two pipes before they go to a collector, mid pipe, and back out to the muffler. From a performance standpoint, the design differences here are very, very important. And it matters so much because one of those designs creates a much stronger scavenging effect and therefore much more exhaust pulse velocity than another. Now, before we dive into the individual performance differences of those two systems, let's just quickly remind ourselves where we started with on this bike. This is our Z900 bone stock, 114.7 horsepower and 68 pound feet of torque with a power curve that looks like crap. With no exhaust system changes whatsoever, so again, the stock exhaust still installed, and our custom ECU mapping, the power curve obviously looks massively better, and top-end performance is dramatically improved. So now that we've reminded ourselves that the bike really only makes just under 117 horsepower with a stock exhaust system installed and proper tuning, let's dive into what the two different header designs do in terms of performance improvements. With a 4-2 into 1 header design, so the full M4 that we first showed you on this bike when we were doing our exhaust-specific testing and tuning, there's gains literally everywhere. Everywhere you look in the RPM range, we've picked up about four foot-pounds of torque, eh, maybe closer to three down here, but four at the peak, and you've gained anywhere from like four or three horsepower down here, all the way up to almost nine at the very top end of the rev range. But with a four into one header design, like the Delcovic system that we have on the bike right now, and we just finished building our custom mapping for, you can see the performance improvements are not nearly as dramatic. In fact, right down here at somewhere around 5500 rpm there is no improvement whatsoever it doesn't even flow any better than the stock header which is a truly terrible design on these 2025 plus models yeah there's still gains everywhere after that but you're missing five horsepower at the top end from a 421 system versus a 41 system those four into one header and collector designs simply do not create as strong of a scavenging effect and therefore not nearly as much exhaust pulse velocity as a proper four into two into one header design now, as I said in the start of this video, this is not a bike-specific problem. This does not just apply to our 25Z900 here. And just to show you that, I decided to shoot this video today because I have the opportunity to illustrate this both on our Z900 and our brand new Ninja 1100 back-to-back -back because I have full Delcovic 4 into one systems on both bikes right now. Now just for the sake of making an accurate comparison like we did with the Z900, let's go ahead and quickly recap the performance of our new Ninja 1100 that I've got here behind me when it was bone stock. Once we were done getting it broke in, the bike made 124.8 horsepower and 77.5 pound-feet of torque to the tire on pump gas. And just like the Z900, which we've already covered in a previous video, the stock tuning on this bike sucks. With the stock exhaust system still installed, but proper custom ECU mapping in place to maximize performance of the bike, you pick up 5 horsepower at the peak, 10 horsepower out there at 10,000 RPM, and you gain about 3 pound-feet of torque literally everywhere throughout the rev range. So now that we've established really quickly what the bike makes it wide open throttle with the stock exhaust system in place and proper tuning, let's start comparing the two different exhaust header designs on this bike. Blue line there, Run 21, is this bike with a full Akrapovich exhaust system installed and our custom ECU mapping in place to match. That full Acra is a 4 into 2 into 1 header design, just like the M4 we showed you on the Z900. As you can see, the performance gains are just massive throughout the entire rev range. 6 pound-feet of torque throughout the middle and all the way to the limiter, and over 10 horsepower at the top end. Now if we go ahead and overlay the Delcovic exhaust system, which is the green line there, Run 13, you can see that it's the same story as the Z900. With proper, perfectly dialed in custom ECU mapping in place for the airflow needs of that four into one header design, the bike makes 134 horse and 84, and we'll call that a half pound feet of torque. Yeah, the performance is relatively the same till about 6,500, and then after that, it simply does not flow as well, and it makes less power and torque everywhere than a proper four into two into one header design 
like the Acura exhaust that we're showing here, or any of the other systems such as the Hindle that we've already made a video for as well, that share that proper header setup. Now, I just want to be perfectly clear here. I only was able to make this video today and show you this back-to-back -back comparison because we did go ahead and order both of the Delkovic exhaust systems for our new Ninja 1100 and our new Z900 at the same time, and this just happened to line up perfectly with my schedule here. I am not making this video at all to bash Delkovic, period. I have nothing against the guys. The pipes are very, very, very reasonably priced. I think these are like 400 something dollars a piece. And yeah, they are better than stock. But I did want to take this opportunity to go ahead and highlight the significant differences in the performance between the two header designs. Again, four into one and four into two into one. Because they're real and you should know about them before you go ahead and decide to purchase one exhaust system versus another. Now, a lot of folks are probably wondering, knowing that these do not flow as well as a four into two into one system, why any exhaust manufacturer would choose to make them this way. And my assumption's always purely been down to cost. You simply have two less pieces of pipe here when you have all four head pipes go straight into the collector versus all four head pipes, then into two, and then into the collector out to the mid pipe. So it's just simply cheaper to manufacture because there's less parts. And if you are shopping for an exhaust system, you will often see that this header design is what's used by a lot of the knockoff or Chineseium systems as I like to call them, because again, it's just cheaper to make. Now obviously here at Tool Dynaworks, I don't personally care which exhaust system you put on your bike. My job is to build you the highest quality custom mapping for your specific setup, which is exactly why we buy systems like this, install them on our bikes, and build custom mapping for them. Because obviously we understand that these are significantly less expensive than some of the other high-end systems, so a lot of people will still buy them and use them. And the reason that we have to do this exhaust specific testing, as we've covered again in many videos, but I will touch on here for just a minute, is that obviously the airflow needs are dramatic, and therefore the fueling needs are dramatically different as well from one setup to another. Now, we're obviously never going to share specific map or fuel values because, well, that's the result of all of the countless hours of R&D we put into each setup for the platforms that we offer tuning support for. But what I will show you is this. This is a 3D representation of the fuel trim table for one of those pipes. Again, this is the trim table, so it's the changes we have to make to the stock fuel mapping versus another. You don't need to understand anything about fueling or really anything other than just basic pattern recognition here to see that this is obviously significantly different than that. Now again, we're never going to get into specific values here, but what I can share with you besides that 3D representation that you just saw, which very clearly highlights the difference in the fueling needs for these two systems, is this. If you use something like a 4 to 2 into one map in this Delcovic header design, say like the full Acra, which is how I ran it to start with, just to see where I needed to trim the fueling, you're talking about like 15% lean conditions in some spots and 10% rich conditions in others. So if you do not use a tuner like us that develops this type of individual header and exhaust design mapping properly, your bike is never going to run nearly as well as it should. And the sad reality of the motorcycle tuning industry is that almost nobody, with very few exceptions, goes through this level of R&D like we do here at Tool Dino Works. There might be some tuners out there that will grab one or two systems for each platform that they offer support for, but they're never doing what we do and just swiping our card nonstop for every popular system on the market for each specific setup. So, if you are looking to get your bike properly tuned and dialed in, obviously, in our opinion, we're the right people for the job here at Tool Dino Works. All of our mail and ECU flashing services are available on our website, twowheeldynoworks.com. On the home page or the shop page, you can simply enter your bike's specific year, make, and model in the fitment finder, and you'll see our mail and ECU flashing service for your specific bike if we offer one for your model. So to wrap this up, I really do hope that this video helped illustrate the differences from one header design to another for those of you out there with a modern high-performance inline four motorcycle that are shopping for an aftermarket full system. Definitely take this information into consideration before you buy one system versus another, because obviously there's very clear performance differences between the two designs. If you still have any questions about what exhaust system we would recommend here at Two Old Dino Works, or performance differences from one setup to another for your specific bike that you're looking to get tuned, do not hesitate to email us at support at tooldinoworks.com. I personally answer any and all tech support questions here at the shop every single day that we're open, and we truly are always happy to help.